Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at the application that we're going to use as the basis for our scripted REST API, the vehicles application. At the moment, however, that application, that table, doesn't contain any data. And we all need demo data, right? And aren't you tired of creating demo data either manually or semi-manually? So I thought as part of this series, we'll just take a little detour and take a look at an application that I use to generate demo data for my applications. It's called Mockaroo. So let's go ahead and create some demo data and then we'll see how we can import that data either via a spreadsheet or even better, using an incoming integration in Integration Hub. It's real easy, so let's get started. So this is the homepage of Mockaroo. You'll need to create an account. There are different pricing plans that you can get, but there is also a free account level. Uh, what we're seeing here at the moment is just a demo schema uh, that is presented by the system itself. But let's go ahead and create our new schema. So by schema, we just mean a table schema, so where we need to define the fields and the values that we want to have in those fields. So if I come here to create a new schema here, what we'll do, we'll just need to replace these default values into the values that we want to have. So for example, we need the make of the car. And then for the, the type of field here, we've got all these different options here. We've got different options for car details, make, model, year, etc. There's a whole library here that you can filter and take a look at. So for the first one, we'll select car make, and then we'll go ahead and select model. And then we'll just skip ahead here and do everything real quick because you don't need to see all the different details for the different fields that I want to create. But suffice to say that the fields that we are creating here are exactly the same as the ones that we've already got in our table schema in our vehicles application. Okay. So now that we've finished creating our schema, we can go ahead and export that data. So there are different file formats that you can use here, such as JSON or Excel. And for our little demonstration here, we'll just change the number of rows that we want to export to 10. I think uh, with a free account, you can export a maximum of 1,000 rows rather uh, per export run. And then we go ahead and download that data. We download a spreadsheet and we can open it up and take a quick look at those 10 records that are created using that table schema and the type of fields that we selected. So we can see here that we've got 10 records for all the fields that we defined and we've got the demo data for all the fields that we have specified. Note here that we only have an end date for one of those 10 because we specified in the schema itself that we didn't want to populate field values for every single record. You can actually specify how many records or the percentage of records that you want to have populated with field values and the rest you can just leave as blank. For our demonstration, however, here, we won't go through the process of importing that spreadsheet because I'm sure most of you have done that before using import set tables. Instead, we're going to use a better way. We're going to actually create an API for our data that we have right here and connect to it from our ServiceNow instance and pull the data in that way automatically. So the way we do that is we go and create an API in Mockaroo. So you can see here, it's already defaulted to the vehicles schema. So you can define different schemas here and how many records you want to generate every time you pull data in using that API. You can also see the endpoint up the top there by default. We don't have to do anything else. Click on create. That's it. We can then connect to this API using that API key that is part of our account. So before we set up our data source, I've already gone ahead and created a connection and credential alias in ServiceNow for our Mockaroo Vehicles application. So if we come down here to the connection here, you can see the connection URL is the endpoint that we just saw in Mockaroo. So now if we come to our data sources here and create a new one, we'll give this one a name, Mockaroo Vehicles. We'll provide the table label for the import set table which will be import vehicles. The type here will need to be REST integration hub. And then the format that we're going to get responses from that API back in will be JSON. So we'll need to select that as well. The path for each row will be delineated with these two forward slashes. So once you do select the REST integration hub type uh, in your data source, you'll see this request action field appear. So what we need to do is create a new request action. And what this will do is open up 
uh, the action designer in Flow Designer, uh, it's more or less been pre-configured. We only have to provide a few other parameters to connect to our data source. So here again, we'll give it a name called Get Vehicles. It will be contained in our vehicles application. We'll provide a description and then click on Submit. So as you can see here, we've got the foundation now for the connection that we're going to make to the data source, to the Mockaroo API. We don't really need to do that much here. We don't need to add any action steps here. All we need to do is click on the rest step, action step, uh, give it a name, uh, say that we're going to define the connection details uh, using a connection alias, the one that we just looked at. And then we'll go ahead and add the API key as part of the header so that we are authorized or authenticated to connect to that API. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So we just go ahead and save and publish that. And then we can come back to our main ServiceNow interface, select that request action, and our data source is done. Okay, that will connect to that API and pull that data. Okay, what's the next step? Well, like all new data sources, we need to test load some records because at the moment we don't have an import set table. So we can't do any field mapping yet. We can't create a transform map. So we'll just go ahead and test load those records. And if we come here and open up one of these records, we can see that that worked. We've got that data, we've connected to the API and we're just pulling in fresh demo data with every single core. Isn't that just fantastic? No more manual creation of data for our applications, for our demo data. So now that we've test loaded those 20 records, let's go ahead now and create our transform map. Again, we'll give it a name, transform vehicles. We'll specify the vehicles table as the target table. And we'll just go ahead and click on auto map matching fields. And because I've made the field names in the API exactly the same as the field names that I've got in my vehicles application, those nine fields are automatically mapped. I don't have to go ahead and do any manual field mapping. What I will do, however, is go ahead and change or set the coalesce for the VIN field, the vehicle identification number, because that is in actual fact the unique identification number for every vehicle on this planet. <laughs> so hopefully we can't go wrong by setting that as the coalesce field. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to skip indexing here. I will take care of that a little bit later. But if you haven't already watched my videos earlier about indexing in ServiceNow, take a look at them. It is very important for the performance of your application and your instance as a whole. One other thing that we should do, however, is change the format for the date fields. So we specified year, month, and date in our Mockaroo table schema. So we just need to make sure that we use the same format here as well for when we import records otherwise we'll get errors so we'll just do go ahead and do that for the start date and the end date so we'll come over here to our application navigator and go to scheduled imports we'll go ahead and create a new record we'll give it a name and when you do it this way that means you can just run this scheduled import however often you like and just pull in new demo data as much as you like. Okay, we're going to select the data source, Mockaroo Vehicles. Now, for the purpose of simplicity and time, I'm just going to run this as myself. I'm actually a system administrator in this instance, but this is a big no-no normally. Okay, create a separate integration user with the respective roles or the roles that that user needs to perform this operation. OK, don't do it as a system administrator. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then we can just go and execute it. And that's it. OK, we have now defined an API in Mockaroo that connects to our table schema. And now that we can connect to it from ServiceNow using Integration Hub, using that custom REST Integration Hub action, pulling that data into ServiceNow, either as a scheduled job, doing that automatically, or if you want to execute it manually, you can do that as well. It is that simple. Okay, there is no reason anymore to create demo data manually. <laughs> if we open up one of the records here, you'll see here that the year has a comma after the two. 
maybe you already know how we could fix that, or at least what direction we should be going in. If you said field attribute, dictionary attribute, uh, you will be absolutely correct. So uh, what we'll do here, we'll just right click on the field here, come to configure dictionary, and then come down to our attributes related list, create a new record here. Do you know what the attribute is called? Starts with the letter F, format, <laughs> okay? So we select format, we select the value of none, we save that, and then we can come back to our form here and we can see that the year is formatted or well, with no formatting exactly how it should be. So that's it. Now we have our own vehicle demo data in ServiceNow in our table. And now we can start the process of creating a web service to allow external clients and applications to connect to that data. So stay tuned for that. It's coming in the next video.